Yeah, it's great. It's an honor that the ownership group gave us the opportunity to offer the filly for sale. She's potentially a once in a lifetime filly. Sebastian Hutch, CEO of Inglis Bloodstock. The chaos time is about to start for you, isn't it? The sales back to back to back and all the preparation that goes with that. Yeah, this is what we live for. It's a busy time of the year. We go classic Premier Easter and then the breeding stock sales. It's hectic, but really enjoyable. And we had a good start to the sales season at Classic. It was really fantastic buyer interest in it. It looks like interest in Premier is really strong. You know, lots of nice horses in the sale. Good buyer interest again. Year after year, that sale produces good horses. I mean, you talk about the Everest winner, think about it. Just a bunch of smart horses come out of it every year, and hopefully the same will be the case this year. Chairman's in May has become... Well, it's become a party for racing almost, hasn't it? Well, it's become a party for everybody. A lot of people have accumulated good stories about that sale in a short space of time. Well, tell us a bit more. It's like a tuxedo night, really, isn't it? Yeah, we wanted to try and distinguish the sale from our other sales. We felt like there was an opportunity to create a boutique-type event to the night. It sits at a time of the year when people in our industry tend to be a bit more relaxed. We thought it'd be fun to create, effectively, a party around a broodmare sale. And that's how it's played out. Last year was the biggest and best yet. I mean, we look forward to the sale this year. We have a host of nice mares to sell already, but She's Extreme is one of the most exciting mares we'll ever have had to sell, so she's going to be a highlight on that night. All right, Inglis Easter, April 7 and 8, first foal out of Winx. Now, this is a massive coup for you guys. Yeah, it's great. It's an honour that the ownership group gave us the opportunity to offer the filly for sale. She's potentially a once-in-a-lifetime filly or product or whatever you want to call her and I think it's going to be a special event for the industry here I think it is a capacity to engage a very broad cross-section of not just converted industry people but new people as well it's mainstream cut through and that's rare isn't yeah, it yeah. she's arguably the most accomplished racehorse in the history of the Australian thoroughbred but very 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 rare that a female progeny of a mare like Winx would get offered for sale anywhere in the world and I think that's helped heighten the interest not just domestically but internationally. I mean, we're going to be talking a big figure. It's 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 impossible to, to try and even have a stab at what the figure might be. Yeah, well, the record price for a yearling filly in Australia, shared by two fillies, they both made 2.6 million. Is that a benchmark? Uh, I suppose so. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to go right, you know, to achieve a premium price for a, for a yearling. You know, they're young horses, they're changing all the time. While there's a huge amount of pressure and there's an element of burden about it, it's exciting, it's been stimulating for our whole team. It's gonna be a special afternoon at Riverside and you know, hopefully, not only can she sell well, but hopefully she can go on and be a good race filly. I think that would be, that would be a great story. So much more we could talk about, but one thing before we do wrap it up is just this, this transformation towards the English digital and the online part of the sales. It's just become enormous now, hasn't it? It's obviously been great for our business, but it's been great for the market. It's brought a lot of new people into the industry, I think, because what it's created is a very transparent entry point for people at a variety of different levels, you know, particularly at a lower level for people who just want to dip their toe and have a go. If I had said to you five years ago that one in every five races won in Australia during a calendar year would be won through by a horse that had been offered through English Digital, you would have said, well, that's bonkers, <laughs> you know, it doesn't work that way. I mean, that's 20% of races. But that's what it is now. It's tracking towards 25% of races. Ah, fantastic. Um, well, as I said, uh, it is heading into the chaotic time and we appreciate your time today. Uh, may it be a, a fantastic run to the end of the sales season for you, Sebastian. Touch wood. Thanks, Hamill. Appreciate it. Cheers.